This is a quick look at the new Notebook for iPad app. I've already purchased the app and downloaded it to my iPad. So I'm going to go ahead and touch on the Notebook icon. And the first thing it does is open up what's called the Content Manager. I'll go ahead and open up a document I created for this quick look. And here I've just outlined a few things you can do in the Content Manager. You can open existing files. You can delete files, create new files, and rename files. If I return to the Content Manager, it'll save the file that I'm working on. If I double tap on one of the file names, I'm able to change the name. And if I want, I can touch on the Edit button in the top left, and then select the different files that I want to delete, and then just hit the trash can in the upper right part of the screen. I'm not going to delete any of these files, so I'm just going to touch on the Done button. Let me open back up the file I'm using for this quick look, and let's take a look at the parts of the app. Inside the app, you have four main areas. The work area, which is where all your objects go. You also have a page scroller area on the left hand side, which allows you to scroll through your pages. You have a menu bar at the top for sharing or returning to the content manager or undoing the last action. And you have a toolbar at the bottom, which allows you to add different objects or select objects or move between pages. In the page scroller area, you're able just to scroll through the different pages in a notebook file. And if you touch on one of the pages, it'll jump directly to that page. You can also add pages and delete pages with the icons at the bottom of the page scroller. If I want to insert a blank page, I just touch on the Add Page icon, and I've inserted a blank page. Since I don't need this page, I can use the Delete Page icon to delete the page I just created. Looking at the toolbar, we have a selection arrow, a pen, eraser, a text button, and an image button. We also have buttons that we can use to go back and forth between the pages. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we use these tools. I can start with the draw tool. So I touch on the pen. Now that that's selected, I can go ahead and just touch on the iPad and draw anything I want. If you touch and hold on the pen tool, you do have a pop-up option screen, which allows you to change colors or switch over to a highlighter pen. Next, we have an eraser tool, which allows you to erase your pen drawings. Notice if I just touch and move my finger around, I can erase the image. If I hold down on the eraser tool, I can also change the size of the eraser. To add text, you touch on the text tool, and then you touch in the work area where you want to place your text. And to add your text, you just touch in that location one more time. The iPad's keyboard will automatically display so you can enter your text. It's very easy to control the properties of your text. Let me add a new text object, and then touch in it to begin editing. I have a text properties button in the menu bar where I can go ahead and define what font I want to use, what color I want the text to be, and what size. In this case, I'll go ahead and make it 48 point, and now I'll begin typing. When I'm done, I can close the keyboard and then add or modify one of the existing objects. The last tool we have is to add an image. So I'll touch on the image tool, which will allow me to insert an image from my iPad's photo library. I can also insert a picture directly by touching on the camera icon. So let me touch on the camera icon, and I'll just point my camera, and I'll just take the picture. And if I want to use that image, I just touch on the Use button. Let me undo that action and touch on my Image tool, and let me just select an image from my photo library. 
I'll go ahead and touch on my next page button. And let's take a look at modifying objects. Once you have objects on the page, you can move them around, you can rotate the objects, resize them, delete them, turn them into an infinite cloner, and you can even attach sound to an object. So let's take a quick look on how that's done. I'll return to the previous page, and I'm just going to touch on my image object, and I'm just dragging it to an area of the workspace. I can touch and move my finger to rotate the image. I can touch and drag to move it, and then touch and drag on the resize handle to enlarge the image. This works the exact same way for your pen drawing objects and your text objects. If you touch and hold on an object, you'll get options for deleting the object, turning the object into an infinite cloner, or attaching a recorded sound. I'll go ahead and delete the object. I'll touch on my working with text, text object. I'll touch and drag the resize handle to make it a little bit bigger. To edit an existing text object, you double tap on the text object and then touch in the text object to go into edit mode. And then you can touch where you want the cursor to be. And you can add text, delete text, or even select text and change the properties. So for instance, if I hold down my finger and let go, I can choose the select option. And with the word with selected, I can change the color of that word. And I'll even change the font type. And I'll close out my keyboard. Another thing you can do with objects is attach a recorded sound. I'll demonstrate by selecting my attach sound text object. And then if I just hold down on that object, I'll get an option for add sound. So I touch on that button. It's now waiting for me to record a sound and attach it to that text object. So I'll touch on the record button, attach sound. After I make my recording, if I like it, I can go ahead and just touch on the add button. And you'll notice that a corner audio icon appears on that text object to show that there's an attached sound. The last thing I'll do is show you how easy it is to download a smart notebook file from the internet. So I'm returning to my notebook content manager and then I'll leave the application and go into my Safari browser. Here's a file from the Notebook Gallery website called Drag and Drop. I'll go ahead and touch on the Download File button, and now I'll go ahead and open a notebook. It'll convert the file so it can be read on the iPad, and then I can use the application. To share a file, all you need to do is touch on the share button at the top right of the screen and then touch on email current file, which is currently the only option available. It saves the file and then uses my iPad's default email account to send the file. The file is already attached, so all I need to do is enter the email address in the to field and then touch on send. Let me cancel this and delete that draft and return back to the Notebook Content Manager. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at the new Notebook for iPad app.